Hello, everyone, to another episode of Half a Clue TV Review. On today's episode, we'll be covering Hawkeye Season 1, hopefully, if they make another one, uh, which premiered on Disney+, Plus, and the last episode just premiered on December 22nd. On today's episode, it'll be Ron and uh, me, Philip, discussing the intricacies and the high art form of Hawkeye and how <laughs> we think it transcends the uh, Disney and Marvel or just superhero TV genre and all. Do you agree with that, Ma- uh, Do you agree with that, Ron? No, not at all. Really? Because I think half of Reddit <laughs> believes this is the best uh, superhero TV series of all time. That really blows my mind. Yeah, uh, I don't know why. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. That, I think that's like the easiest way to sum it up. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Yeah. But yeah, it's she- it's really not that great. But like, yeah. that's not, that sounds like I didn't like it. But yeah, I'm sticking with I really liked it. Yeah. More than I was expecting. <laughs> so, brief premise of the show, um, as presented to us by the great um, uh, Bob Iger and Disney and Kevin Feige, uh, overlords of Disney, who now operate everything we like to watch or crawl up our ass. It's uh, and and I say this as a fan. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's it called? Hawkeye is about uh, Clint Barton after the events of Avengers Endgame. Where you know he's trying to live a normal life. He's retired. Uh, he's retired his costume, his uh, vigilante life as Ronan. He's hung up the bow. Exactly. <laughs> and now he's you know chilling at New York with his family. But on the news, he sees that somebody has donned his Ronan outfit, and all the troubles that came with that outfit is following that person. That person is no other than comic book favorite uh, Hawkeye Jr., also known as Kate Bishop. Record scratch. Er- <laughs> Although I think believe she's just referred to as Hawkeye, like just straight up Hawkeye. Oh, I know. I just call her that because like yeah, I, I, I never I loved her character as other people did in the like the Matt Fraction comic book and stuff. Uh-huh. She's cool. She's fine. But in here, I like her a lot better on the show. Uh, I'm unfamiliar with how she is in the comics, but I really liked her on the show. I think she's definitely one of the strongest parts of the show, if not the strongest, honestly. Yeah. She's uh, like, uh, oh, snap, what's her name? Uh, Haley Steinfeld. Haley Steinfeld. I think she really does, you know, steal it. She's she's like a, a super solid casting. I think she's like uh, believable and she's like uh, like very likable in the role. Like, yeah. I think she, she pulls off like this kind of fangirl this for hawkeye but like in a very like uh admirable kind of not admirable uh what's the what's a word for it? i'm trying to think oh what like, do you mean oh, that's, uh, that's okay that's yeah like, okay yeah. like an admirable kind of way <laughs> how like um i don't know like i like it i like how she's like you know she witnessed him of course when she was a child during the battle of new york yeah. she sees him jumping off the building and and then she's like I want to be that guy. And I think that's totally understandable because it's like if you're just a regular human living in this world. The only two people are Black Widow, who is like a trained assassin that yeah. you know, kills people for a living, or Hawkeye, who's also a trained assassin that kills people for a living. But <laughs> yeah. he has like at least yeah. a bow. <laughs> yeah, at least he's got like some more uh, like, you know, Pizarras. arrows and stuff. And yeah, and it's really cool. And it's like, you know, if anything that like the Hunger Games phenomenon showed us, like people do like to <laughs> to like you know live up to their heroes we had i forget like this huge spike in kids that were wanting to get bow and arrows and shit so they can right. be like katniss and stuff and now even hawkeye and i do love that reference in the first one is like oh is that is that lady hawkeye no that's katniss <laughs> yeah <laughs> when they come in um yeah no i think I, when they announced that Haley seinfeld was gonna okay first honestly when they announced the show i was like okay i mean i i think it's more i was more excited because it's i, I really like the you know the actor jeremy renner well, by the way, when they casted Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye and I saw him on Thor, I was like, wait, they got an Oscar nominated actor to play like a side bitch. Yeah, he's really Thor? just there for like one shot. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, OK. And then he was in Hawkeye. And I was like, how did they convince him to be Hawkeye? But maybe there's something going on in Avengers. And I saw him in Avengers. and I was like, he was cool. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, they flushed him out of Avengers Age of Ultron. Gave and, him a family. Yeah, they gave him a family. Um. And they flushed him out more in Avengers Endgame where he got Ronin and stuff. And that's probably my favorite part of uh, Hawkeye since then. Yeah. And um, they've really leaned into that whole family man aspect of it being really the only hero that has a family other than like, you know, uh, Scott Lang, who has his daughter, of course. But right. it's different because he's like a single dad. And yeah, stuff he's a like single that. dad there. But like, you know, he's not with his you know ex anymore or whatever. But this guy, he's got, you know, he's married. He has three kids. And it's understandable why every time he wants to, like, stop being a hero, yeah. it's like, yeah. And then, of course, in after the events of Infinity War and in Endgame, he becomes Ronan because he loses that family. And, and that is anger. on this rage and how he does it what's yeah. best. 
Um, yeah, it's like I said, it was like when I was announced, I was a little dubious, but I was like, you know, I like Jeremy Renner and he's an Oscar, two time Oscar nominated actor. Let's see him actually try to flesh out those muscles, right? Yeah. But then, I mean, in this one, they kind of, they kind of do it. I mean, I don't, yeah. not to the fullest of Jeremy Renner's potential or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or even he was great at Wind River, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a fantastic actor, like you already said. So he definitely has that potential. And I would hope that if they get a season two, which I'm pretty sure they will, uh, like I would love to see them, like you know, expand more, right? Give you- them more opportunities to like, yeah, yeah. I think I think at the end I'm gonna ask you if do you think there's a season two or if it's just a straight up mini series and they're just gonna use that character for like hey but they're gonna put her in the movies and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll talk about that in a bit. All right, so let's just go briefly into the first five episodes of uh, Hawkeye. Okay. Um, I gotta say when I first watched Hawkeye and and no back to your thing about Haley Seinfeld, I was probably really excited for Haley Seinfeld because I was like one the young one of the youngest Oscar nominated actresses ever. Yeah. Um. And I was surprised. I was surprised they got it for Kate Bishop because, like, I always consider like not even D, like maybe F level character. Like, yeah. <laughs> just like, but I was it's like, a little harsh, but okay. yeah. But okay, but then, but then I was like, wow, they got Haley Seinfeld. I mean, that elevated a lot. Um, Leia was happy because she was like, wow, it's gonna be one of the few um, quarter Filipino actress, uh, Filipino superheroes or whatever. Even though her character. Oh yeah, I forget she's like part Filipino. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> What so it's like um yeah it was cool I was like curious how she is and you know I I really I liked her in almost all the things that she's done even the sh- the the movies that you know suck kind of yeah. like I mean I'm not a huge fan of the Pitch Perfect series but I thought she was okay in that I've never perfect. seen them and I don't want to <laughs> no no have you seen uh, you seen True Grit right yes of course yeah, yeah True was, Grit was yeah. I think where she broke out yeah, yeah. and uh, again stole the show there where exactly. she was like this really standout kid who just she had stole so the much... show from matt damon and jeff Bridges, which is insane yeah that's great like yeah so on this one you know i was curious on you know how she take a k bishop character which i like i don't know why i just don't like junior characters superhero junior characters that much yeah so. that, that's fair but i feel like again like her character is one of the ones that's like treated with seems to be treated with like the most respect oh yeah and admiration not only by like her mentor you know which yeah. is like hawkeye but also but, with her abilities and her yeah. capabilities and what she does and her morals and you know her character growth like she's the most fleshed out of all the characters yeah in this one even more than hawkeye ironically this should have been i mean i mean obviously yeah. you can't call a cape show because no one will watch it <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, i feel like in this one they even do a better job of in the comics where she she like as she's she's once she's older she kind of decides to become like a hero or whatever yeah but in this one she's training from as a kid as we see in episode one right right so she has established i know there was like complaints about oh how is she able to take down all the tracksuit mafia kids as like um, or go toe-to-toe with yelena wait like, that part i do agree with the toe-to-toe with yelena part like you know yelena probably would have wiped her ass but it's yeah. you know i think she kind of does like you can yeah. argue that she's holding back yeah because she doesn't want to kill yeah. but then she straight up says it. it's like i could have killed you if i wanted to i yeah. just don't want to hurt you you yeah. seem like a nice person <laughs> <laughs> but i think with uh Kay bishop like i got why she was able to physically get toe-to-toe with tracks mafia because one they're buffoons and two um <laughs> yes well and we'll get into our criticism when, when the finale and two i think Kay bishop you know they established like fencing expert best one of the best archers ever yeah uh hand-to-hand martial art you know from a kid right and she's from one yeah. of the which richest families in new york so they definitely have the capital to put her in all the best training like yeah like which is kind of funny because like later her mom's like don't go out and like fight and stuff and it's like you've been like bankrolling exactly. her training as like from since she was a little kid oh when we get to criticism <laughs> of characters I she's like an know. olympic level athlete so it's like in both gymnastics hand-to-hand combats and archery and stuff so yeah again yeah, i like that they added that yeah and this was mainly directed by two sets of directors uh Riss thomas and the other one's bird and birdie and you know spoiler alert um and for my opinion i guess if you guys cared if you guys didn't then fuck off i'm just kidding yeah, <laughs> that's why they're listening man <laughs> exactly is a uh, wrist thomas and um bird and birdie and my least favorite episodes came from wrist thomas and my favorite episodes both in shooting style and also just i guess how they handle the story was from bird and birdie mm-hmm. and because of the first two episodes i was like trudging not gonna lie it was okay it wasn't bad it wasn't terrible i thought okay it's fun it's like felt extremely disposable and there's nothing yeah. that really uh engaged me with the material but then when the bird and birdie episode happened echoes yeah i was which i was like when we got introduced to maya lopez slash echo i always liked that character in the comic because her di- design was cool and she was interesting like she's deaf but physically she, she's basically like taskmaster essentially yeah um 
which I didn't get that in the show. No, no. So you mentioned it later. It's like, oh, she has like mirror reflex, this kind of thing. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess so. I think <laughs> I think they're gonna develop that in the show, probably less so in the movie, right? Yeah. And that's why I think her and uh, Daredevil team up every once in a while against Kingpin. Yeah. Which I cool. can see that work perfectly. All, like one who's deaf and one who's blind. Yeah. And then, and, but they're like, you know, and I think <laughs> I honestly that'd be cool. Communicate. <laughs> exactly. Because exactly. she's gonna do hand signs, and she's like, okay. He's well, like. <laughs> Let me hold your hand while you're saying. <laughs> I know that's gonna be. Oh, we're gonna see. Um, so I think that could be, you know, right for drama. But yeah, when when the Echo episode happened and we saw our origin character, and by the way, uh, and they had one of my favorite uh, Native American actors. Um, his name is uh, Zon McLaren. Claren, oh Claren. yeah, dude, guy's a beast. From yeah. West Fargo World to Far- Westworld. Yeah, yeah. Westworld uh, Fargo, Fargo season two. Yes, and Westworld season two. Yeah, yeah. all the season two is where <laughs> yeah. he, he, he he kills it. And he was also um, one of my favorite parts in. Uh, I know you haven't seen Doctor Sleep yet. One day we'll watch it and okay. cover that. Yeah, he was also one of the best parts of that. He's kind of like the secret MVP and yeah. all this stuff. Um, not gonna lie, when he died, I was like, oh, sh-. I was kind of sad. I was like, damn it, man! I really want to see them do more with him. Yeah, like I, he, I, could, he has so much potential. I hope he comes back in uh, flashbacks for uh, Echo, the TV series, and stuff like that. And yeah. like when they go into the back, I just like what a waste of an actor. Yeah. Um. I but, mean, Marvel has a tendency to do that. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> they cast fantastic people. You mean Idris like, Elba? Great. And then it's like, oh, well, I guess that's fine. <laughs> Idris Elba was probably the biggest one. Yeah. 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 Um. So you know, this one was. So this one, like, not necessarily like hook. Wait, well, I was never truly hooked on the show, but this one captured my attention more than the previous two episodes. Um, and you know, mainly to the Echo character, and also because of the, I think the shooting style. Because the first two episodes when the hand to hand, a little too much uh, jump cutting, a little too much shaky cam for the hand to hand fight sequences. Yeah, and it was like people in dark suits fighting in darkness i was like oh, yeah. okay no that, that's why yeah that first episode fight scene when she's first fighting with the ronins and she's taking on the the tracksuit mafia and stuff, yeah i was like oh that's gonna that that's giving me some red flags here i feel like that's could potentially become an issue just in terms of like again how it's shot and how it was like you know lit and everything i was like this could this could be a problem but yeah like you're saying episode three they pick that up yeah they had that as like immediately with the fight scenes like i just noticed like one the camera work was so much more stable I could follow the action, like the punches were in the center frame. Like that's George Miller's uh, rule of frame, rule rule of thumb for most uh, action scenes, where like the action has to happen in the center frame for it to follow easily. Yeah. When you do cut to cut, and also that one take sequence when they're chasing, when they're escaping, and they're using the trick arrows, especially with the oh my gosh, the pin arrow was super. Yeah, the cool. car scene and everything, a yeah. super fun car scene, and I think this is also the episode where the chemistry uh, from Haley Steinfeld and, and Jeremy, uh, Renner Jeremy Renner was really like the best. clicked. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I could see them being a duo. This is fun. Like, yeah, I like, like it. The duo stuff worked best when like the duo was directing, like Bird and Birdie. Yeah. I think they're just like <laughs> way better at I, I, I really do think they're way better at directing this the, the material than um you know, Riss Thomas. So I think he redeemed himself a little bit in the finale with uh, his shooting style. Yeah. But uh but we'll get that in a bit. Um and then, you know, and then episode four um episode four happened and I really did enjoy that episode, which is per- partners am I right? We get more into, um, you know, how uh, Hawkeye is dealing with the grief of losing uh, Natasha Romanoff slash Black Widow. Yeah. And, you know, you have the scene where he's, you know, discussing with, uh, you know, Kate Bishop in the apartment. And also the secret MVP of the show is uh, the pizza dog. Yeah, pizza <laughs> dog. The one-eyed dog loves pizza. I know. It's like, <laughs> he's, he's the best. I even I, I love him so much that I put him in our cast list, our <laughs> cheat sheet, where it's like, luck the pizza, or lucky the pizza dog, Jolt. <laughs> Played, by, Played Jolt. by Jolt. Yeah. yeah. Um, a golden retriever. Uh, what's it called? So, and that was kind of cool. Um, and then you know we they they enter Maya's apartment. Um, and you know we get we get I think Laura starts speaking German or she speaks a different language, right? I was like, oh, it's okay. So I guess it's more to like Hawkeye's wife's character. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, but and then we'll see. And they talk about the watch, and we'll see how that pays off at the end. Um, yeah. so it's um. And I did like the fact that her alarms were silent, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, you know, and then, you know, obviously, so Maya comes, or Maya slash Echo comes, and then also Yelena comes, and they have a fight scene, which was fine. And when um when she was dangling off, and it was reminiscent, the shot was very reminiscent of the shot of uh, an endgame where Natasha was dangling off the cliff for the Soul Stone. Yeah. Which I was like, oh, it's a good callback. And the fight scenes were nice. Um, and even though it was in dark, and they were wearing dark clothes, like, they did enough for the background to separate them, so they're not blending in the background. Yeah. They're just you know testament to the good directing. Um, so yeah, I, I like that's like episode probably episode three, yeah, three to five are my favorite. But then the five was Ronan and um, 
and five is when we got the big you know elena's blip story what do you think about that um i liked it i think it it helped provide like good context for her where she's at like mentally like you know emotionally or whatever like she's uh you know first she's kind of on her mission we pick up from where she left off on black widow where she's trying to free the other widows you know and uh, she comes across another widow where she's like just doing straight up mercenary work she's just not yeah. like blacked out whatever and uh and again her finding out natasha's death right because she immediately comes back and she's like where like what the hell like i just lost five years of my life i need to find natasha and then they don't show her discovering what happened but you understand yeah. the implication and especially again what we find out in the end of black widow where she gets uh pointed to at least in the right direction by uh julie louise dreyfus character i forget her name yeah that's but, uh, Ven- um contessa yeah and she's yeah. basically like you gotta go kill hawkeye and it's like Again, I f- that's the only part where I think it stretches believability a little bit, where it's like she knows that Clint and Natasha were like best friends and everything. Yeah. She knows that they had a good relationship. So do I believe that she's immediately going to go and try to kill him? Eh, maybe. Like, I don't know. Like, she wouldn't want to talk to him. She wouldn't want to get like find out a little bit more context of what happened. Like, eh, well, I, I mean, she barely like she just because what oh, I, I can't. I to be honest, I do agree that's like a bit of a writer flaw. Yeah, I'm like, but then eh. they, I mean, they try to say it at the, they try to save that plot hole at the end where like I just found out about you not too long ago, and I'm just like, yeah. But I mean, you could just always just Google search, right? Yeah, so I like, know. It's like <laughs> I don't know. Everybody fucking knew. Like yeah. your Tommy Johns in the streets knew that Hawkeye <laughs> and Black Widow were buddies. Yeah, but um, I mean, I guess she didn't know how big the start relationship was yeah it's whatever but yeah that's that's one of the flaws that i yeah. just kind of irked me but and also um fine. they didn't know about the black widow post credit scene until after they started writing the series oh because you know <laughs> that one like you know and that that one made it seem like because you know val's supposed to be a government like in a secret black ops government employee yeah but then in this one they say eleanor is the one who hired uh yelena to kill hawkeye yeah which is just like i guess because like but then again like people are saying oh but no eleanor contacted val contessa yeah to do it but why the fuck would she get involved with like crime shit who knows it's just like yeah uh, it's just little inconsistencies that were dumb but i guess could be overlooked mostly because you kind of see where the story's headed but you know if it had been better or well crafted more well crafted than it would have probably you know, yeah relieved those inconsistencies but whatever what did you think about the kingpin reveal before we get into the final episode uh i thought that was cool like i i liked it i was like all right like they showed that it was kingpin i think everyone saw that coming yeah the uh, uncle. yeah especially if she's like yeah there's the uncle and you see like he's wearing the white suit or you see his cufflinks and he's like you know he's got these big baby hands <laughs> it's <laughs> like i wonder who that is it's probably kingpin so when they show it's kingpin i was like oh Okay, and again, with the mom being, like, the person who probably killed the uncle or the yeah. other guy, I was like, also, like, I feel like everyone saw that coming. <laughs> like, yeah. that was no real big twist or anything. So I was like, yeah, that's that was just fine. It's cool. I'm glad to see Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin back in, yeah. officially in the MCU or whatever. He's canon and stuff. I'm like, great, because, I mean, I think that was really solid casting, and he had a great story in, yeah. in Daredevil. So I'm glad to see him here. but. That you is know, that is something yeah. I'm going to ask you about whether we think this is the same uh, Fisk, uh, Wilson Fisk or not. And then based on interviews, I'll tell you what he says. And okay. then and then before and then before we both answer it, yeah. so to give some context. Okay. All right, and so now let's get into the final episode. So this is Christmas, directed by not Bird and Birdie, my um my lesser favorite of the two, Riss Thomas, and um written by Jonathan Igla and uh, Alyssa Clement. Jonathan Igla is the one who uh, created the show, and he based it off the Matt Fraction run of the uh hawkeye tv series uh, hawkeye run the comic book run yeah lots of visual cues especially in the opening yes um so this one is like you know right after the reveal of uh kingpin's coming out but we have a opening scene with you know elnor has an arranged you know talk with kingpin well vince d'onofrio comes and they have a talk and it's our first introduction to vince d'onofrio as kingpin like um in the mcu yeah what did you think about it? Did, did it feel like, oh, an old friend has come back? Or did it feel like it, you're like a copy of something, but you're not quite the same? Just from the first scene. Underwhelming. Yeah. Uh, really. Uh, it's like, again, it, it's hard not to compare him to the Daredevil series. because it's, but, like, it's fair. Yeah, yeah it's it, fair. It's, but it's like, if you're trying to just like completely keep that out of your mind, and it's just like this character that is introduced here. Uh, I think still, still, underwhelming. Like, still <laughs> underwhelming. Like he's supposed to be the overlord of uh, New York. Yeah, right. Like he's like, I run this city. And it's like it doesn't really feel like that. Mm-hmm. Like again, especially with the tracksuit mafia, who he's like 
is under his control. And they're just like these goofy, over the top, yeah. like you know, characters. And it's like, I think with the tone of the show, it's it's one of those things where it's like I, I understand for the most part it's lighthearted. And I, I think that's fine. Like, it's actually, like, okay, like, for the most part. Yeah. But when it's, like, you're coming to these villains, the threats, the people who are supposed to be kind of, like, you know, where the stakes should be higher, right? You're supposed to, like, feel like, oh, no, like, is Kate ready to go up against these guys? It's like, yeah, I feel ready to go up against these yeah, guys. <laughs> I'm like, I could probably take down these dudes. Like, like we could take do. them out with uh, therapy. We yeah. take them down. It's like, okay, so you want to go Mad Dragon. It's a bad idea. Yeah. Go to Coldplay instead. It's like, even then, I that character, it did make me laugh. It like, did. that joke made me laugh. I was like, like chuckling i was like this is cool but it feels like inappropriate for, for what should moment. be like yeah. happening right now this tone should be way more serious and especially with kingpin again he's like he's the big daddy he's the boss and it's like i was like it felt just undercut with humor at times where i was like i really don't think that was necessary yeah uh and it takes away from the moment and whatever so like yeah i don't know again just underwhelming which his, is really disappointing he's also his goofy fucking style well, what do you mean? Like his weird Hawaiian shirt and shit like oh, that? Oh, yeah. I don't know what the fuck that was about. <laughs> like, what? Like they had the white suit because, yeah. you know, you have to have that, which is great. They even have his little, like, cane, like his diamond yeah. cane thing. And I was like, that's cool. I don't know why he was wearing the Hawaiian, Hawaiian shirt. shirt shit. Like, I don't know, man. They might as well just dressed up as fucking Santa. Like, he looked <laughs> like a goofy, like, evil Santa Claus at the end. And not even going to lie, what... What's up with his warehouse or his location or where he's meeting? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, if you just, and, it's, and you know what? I would usually be like, it's not fair to compare, but technically, since you have, this is a recurring character, I think yeah. the comparisons are fair. Yeah. And when we get into Wilson Fisk and stuff, I'm like, well, I have, I have a whole rant. I'm assuming, I mean, you might not have as big a rant it's as I do. It's not a huge rant, yeah. but definitely complaints. Um, And, you know, so after that, you know, we get, you know, it, it, the episode kind of ties up all the loose ends. You know, we have the big fight between um, what Hawkeye and K Bishop versus the Tracksuit Mafia guys, right? Tracksuit Mafia, Yelena, a little bit. Yeah, and then we have Yelena Echo. Echo. <laughs> oh, I. Oh God, we'll get into we'll get into Echo. So you know, we get the plot reveal too that um, Echo's uh, father's death was secretly or- orchestrated by the Kingpin, and uh-huh. that kind of that kind of pays off in this one. Yeah. Um. Okay, and you know, and we find out that Eleanor was, yeah, I say, killed Armand. <laughs> El- that, by the yeah. way, Eleanor was like the weakest character. By all. what a waste of air for Mika. Yeah. I like Jack more. <laughs> I know Jack, and even Jack was wasted. And I love Lala Salamanca or yeah. Lala Salamanca. He's, he's cool. I, I liked his character a lot. I mean, we'll, we'll get into that. But yeah. yeah. So I, I guess him. let's start off with the final climactic battle, right? Okay. Uh, you know. First, first with tracksuit, then we get into uh, Yelena versus Hawkeye and Kingpin versus uh, Bishop. So, what do you think about the tracksuit mafia battle royale? Again, um, I think it was like, you mean like just like the final fight sequence? Just the final fight sequence. Just I think it was worry. really fun. It was yeah. cool, but like uh, I like them fighting on the ice rink in the middle of Rockefeller Center. Uh, it was a cool set piece. Like you know, they drop like the they cut down the tree <laughs> essentially, yeah. and then it's like a mix of them like shooting arrows and trick arrows and having fun. And it was shot decently. They kind of get like that spinning camera movements. Uh, yeah. Um, and like that was cool. It was fun. Uh, do I feel like any kind of threat at all from the tracksuit mafia? No. <laughs> no, like not at all. Like a- they're info. disposable. Yeah, like they're they're as useless as the Chitari. But like at least the Chitari yeah. had energy weapons. Um, but like they they were just kind of they were there. They were mainly just meant to be fodder. Um, yeah, which is again disappointing because I feel like they could have been a lot more. Um, not that my expectations for the tracksuit mafia is high. Right? Yeah, <laughs> like they still managed to undercut them. <laughs> but I think overall it was a fun sequence. I had fun. And it was cool, but that's pretty much it. Favorite trick arrow? Uh, I mean, it's got to be the pam- the pim arrows, like which yeah. are just really cool. <laughs> I love that they've integrated that. Yes, where it's like, oh yeah, him and uh, and t- uh, what's fuck, uh, what's his name, Scott? Like yeah. they had their moments, like you know, where he shot the arrow with him, which is a thing from the comics, which is cool. Like so, I like that they that they had that again. It's it carried over. I think they had more trick arrows in this show than they've we've ever really seen. Which was like, thank God, because it's like, I feel like he does get like undercut a lot. He's yeah. like kind of, he's not, I, I don't know, he might be someone's favorite, you know, Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who you are or why you think that, but <laughs> like, I know. but like, I feel like they <laughs> undercut him so much. Like, they, it's finally, de- I, I like that this show put a spotlight on Hawkeye. And in a way that was like really fun and like enlightening, it's like, yeah, he's got a lot of 
shit that had potential there. And just one of those things is the trick arrows. Like you can see him like, you know, actually being more imaginative and creative. And I liked him like, you know, they, they had that little montage where they're like building the different yeah. arrows and shit. It's like that was fun. And you get the payoff like at the end where they're shooting, you know, arrows that make things big and small. Uh, arrows that like you know the acid arrows the you know smoke arrows and grappling hook like all that stuff is fun I like that so yeah, yeah. it was cool I, I absolutely love the sequence where they did the pin arrow and hit the the coming car oh yeah and, and they the shrank hot, the bus <laughs> and the hot game and I love that it's actually kind of morbid like what if it just grows <laughs> while in the middle and it just kills the bird too as <laughs> like the, the claws get ripped apart but yeah. it's like small stuff like like that's why with I remember when I first watched the finale, I, you saw my text where I was ranting about, like, cause I had the knee jerk reaction, but I realized the show is like, it treats itself as a joke on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. It's very lighthearted. I don't mean this negative way. Like it, the show is like purposely like that. So yeah. it's like, I, I mean, forgive a lot of his faults more than something like Captain America, the, uh, not Captain America. Well, uh, at the Winter end, they call, yeah. Winter's, uh, Falcon and oh, the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that one took it very seriously. Uh -huh. And, you know, with his themes of racial, uh, sec you know, what's it called? Uh, racial persecution, discrimination. It's a lot of political and stuff shit and stuff, which makes sense for that kind of show. Yeah. You know, because it's, again, Winter Soldier and Captain America. There's a lot of political baggage that just comes yeah. with that. But for this, it's like they're just... It, it, it was like I like that it's like the first like Christmas story in Marvel yeah. outside of like I guess Iron Man three, three. <laughs> <laughs> but this is like hey, it's just like them just trying to enjoy Christmas. Hawkeye is just trying to go home to his family for Christmas. Yeah, and it's like uh, yeah, it's more lighthearted and fun. But when you bring in those heavier elements of specifically with Ronan and the Ronan moniker that he took up, which he went. Dark. It conflicts with it so much. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and especially you know, but the, and this weird thing is too, like some of the emotional beats, like remember he was outside the like the memorial for uh, the Avengers. Yeah. Yeah, and then like he talks about Natasha. By the way, I think this this show does a better memorial service for uh, Natasha Romanoff than Black Widow the film. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That that film is just atrocious. Um, like it does it well there, but I think the balance is like at least from Riss Thomas is off. Yeah. I think for Bird and Birdie, they have a better handling of one how to shoot it and also like how they yeah. balance between you know things going out like like honestly the echo backstory was my favorite part of the entire series where that one was a good balance between like lighthearted like her you know besting people but also at the same time you know ronin killing her father right yeah. and then that that it, it flowed well because there you know i think like i saw like i was listening to audio it's like when they have sad music and it, like it's ha ha like, it would have the sad music playing a little bit into the happy scene so yeah. like emotionally you're prepared to going in and that's just like you know yeah good fucking directing and, and i like that it adds more weight to what we see in endgame where you just kind of see him going off he becomes ronin and then he's immediately like you know i'm done yeah like yeah. He, he stops being ronin and it's like no there's consequences to that this one the biggest one basically being the creation of echo as like a villain and who's trying to kill him and everything and it's like understandable like you know this yeah. guy just came in and murdered her father and it again it shows the consequences of him going full vigilante where he's just murdering people he thinks are villains and stuff and there's yeah. consequences to that and it it shows yeah. um to an extent. To an extent, yes. <laughs> yeah, where it's like, should they have leaned in more into that? Yes. Yeah, I think they really should have. Uh, but like, I, don't, I also whatever. think maybe it's like not not enough episodes, six episodes. As much yeah. as I like that it was fun, but like, yeah. I guess like, okay, one, I can maybe there's stuff that they could, like, as much as I like Jack and Lalo Salamanca. Yeah. I know his name is not Lalo Salamanca. We do it because I, I love, um, <laughs> I fucking love uh, uh, Better Call Saul. That's where he's from. Or that's where he's known for at this point. But Tony Dalton, right? Um, yeah, and super charming actor, you know, wide deaf. Um, and also that character is like, you know, I like the fact they pay homage to that character because his character is a sword character in the comics. Yeah. But I mean, he, he's basically a joke, like a joke character. Yeah, he's, he's literally just a joke. Yeah, he's meant to be like kind of that bait and switch where you think he's going to be the villain, but it's like, no, he's, I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> and he, and he, he's like, just at the end, like, and they kind of treat it as a joke when they should it. I mean, he's literally slicing up people with the sword. Yeah. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, dude, he's like, he's this murdering people. people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's hard to have a character fight with the sword and not, you know, be violent as fuck. Yeah, I don't. And he's like straight up laughing too as he's doing it. And yeah. Like, and at the end, like, you know, he wipes off, you know, MCU blood, which means nothing. Yeah. But, and then they're like, you, you want to be a LARPer. By the way, the LARPers are uh, so fucking annoying. Okay. It's like, again, when they had that first episode where they that show him, cool. he has to, like, yeah, meet up with the LARPers and he fights with them and 
even the fact that they make his costume, I was totally on board with that. Cause I'm like, dude, in real life, if you want someone to make you like a really good costume, like on the, you know, whatever, yeah, find some LARPers, find some cosplayers. They'd, they'd be <laughs> really good. Yeah. yeah, they'll make you some good shit. Uh, so I think that was fine. But the fact that they were there and that they were like, you know, helping people and they dressed up and stuff, I was like, all right, can they just go away? <laughs> yeah, they dressed up at the end. Why? Why? Uh, literally the for point? no reason. Just I was like, are joke. they going to start fighting people from the they tracksuit do? mafia? And they, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I was like, this is just dumb. That was dumb. Yeah. <laughs> was Way just, to devalue your threat even further. Yeah, yeah, just literally having these dudes that are just LARPers who are then like yeah. fighting. And I think they, they try to, to have like a little bit like, you know, they show them like training in yeah. like Central Park and stuff and it's like, okay, a completely different thing compared to, be to actual training. fighting. Yeah, it's to be fighting, you know, LARPing style versus like real life combat. If they've been like legit medieval enthusiasts who like again train, because there are people who are yeah. medieval enthusiasts who train like a lot, so that to know how to like fight in sword hands and like there's own martial arts for that. That would have been one thing, but they're they they're introduced as like goofy, over the top like characters, and then you can't just carry that over them to them having to them to be supporting and making this scene not feel goofy and over the yeah. top so i don't know it's whatever it's not egregious as this one the other ones because it's kind of just goofy inherently yeah but it's still kind of i think excessive um yeah. so I, let's, let's kind of go into yelena versus uh hawkeye uh super underwhelmed yeah i mean yelena tries her best and i, I did before that i did like her that one take uh tracking shot of like them yeah when through. they're fighting in the office yeah that was really fun and i i really liked that they had like uh i think uh Florence Pugh shines through as like such yeah. a great character uh from from Black Widow to this she's the best part of of both. Uh, yeah or not, I don't know if I'd say okay. both okay, it's hard I, for I this think Haley Steinfeld. Steinfeld yeah I think this she one, steals it she doesn't have much time yeah that's what I'm saying I think you know I honestly would love a Yelena and Kate Bishop something together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, you know what? If for Hawkeye season two, if they just want to have them two Fuck working yeah. together, I'd be way more down for that. It's the new Black Widow and Hawkeye. You know, yeah. that's way better than like, uh, Ironically, I don't know. I like, have more fun watching them, even though I really like Hawkeye and Black Widow's yeah. dynamic. I had more fun watching them than the original, which is weird. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you mean like, uh, like, uh, Scarlet and uh, Scarlet, Scarlet and Jerry Renner. They have good yeah. chemistry, but the chemistry between, uh, Hailey Seinfeld and Florence Pugh. Yeah. I think it was like pretty dynamic. Yeah, it really yeah. was. I, I loved all their conversations together when they were joking and talking. Like yeah. I, I was liking it. And again, sometimes that Marvel humor will get on my nerves as it did with like the LARPers yeah. or the tracksuit mafia people where I was like, okay, like that's yeah. enough. It's not even fucking funny anymore. But with them, they were like kind of it's natural because it, back and, cause it yeah. all came from their characters. Like all exactly. the characters would say. Right? Yeah. Like it was, it was totally fine. And I think that they, they worked very well together. So I'd be like the I'd much rather see them. Yeah. The elevator scene where she's like, she's trying to fucking touch all the <laughs> buttons and shit. And she's like, go away. Like, it just felt really funny. Like almost that little sister, like big sister yeah, sense, sense. dynamic, which worked really well. Uh, so yeah, there, there's a lot that I, that I liked from her. And uh, I think all the actors were pretty much well cast uh, overall. I enjoyed it. Like I keep saying that, even though I'm, I'm bringing up a lot of complaints, but it's oh, yeah. because, like, I, I you want it to I, get better. It's like yeah. if we don't complain, then they're just gonna be like, we're just making perfect. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I think Kevin Feige. I mean, I think he knows the faults to extend. Yeah, but he's also thinking like a business guy. Like, like we all know that they test these episodes in a focus group or whatever. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, and then they're just like, oh, that we have to laugh per minute. And yeah, they're like, like, wait, guys, it's not funny. We gotta like add a joke, and it's like, no, you don't. You know, that's what happened <laughs> really with uh, Doctor Strange, right? Oh, really? Yeah, it was like a pretty serious movie with a couple jokes every once in a while. Yeah. And they didn't even, you know, the thing with the music, like he, he knows music from, uh, you know, from different time period and stuff like that. It's rumored that that, because uh, Dan Harmon, yeah. uh, the guy who made Community and Rick and Morty, yeah. that they got him in to rewrite the script and actually reshoot scenes <laughs> to, to add more You know humor. what, though? I would love to see Dan Harmon do an MCU movie, like uh, just write and direct one. Like, you know, just to depend. see what you do. I think it would be, if it was like a Deadpool movie, I think it'd be perfect for oh, that. Yeah. yeah I like, think that'd be that'd perfect. Be, yeah. That, that, that would be hilarious. Cause it's, it can be super it's, referential. Yeah. And also that, uh, I think he knows action and stuff just from like Rick and Morty. Like, yeah. And also just in and community. community. Get yeah, community like, I've never scenes. even seen community, but I've know that like, I've seen those scenes it's, where it's, it's shot really well. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, to be fair, He's that's really capable. That's but directed to, by, um, uh, the Russo brothers. Oh yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true. Okay, sorry, we're right, we're so, on a tangent oh, here. Right? <laughs> so to go back to this, and, you know, try yeah. to wrap it up. Um, underwhelming the Yelena and so, the fact that it was like the whistle thing. Really, this, oh the whistle is gonna yeah. stop you from killing it. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Um, I really don't have that much to say other than it was pretty underwhelming. It was kind of forced. 
No, yeah. it, it, it felt like Yelena was really stupid. Like she couldn't just like Google search the <laughs> fact that they're best fucking friends. Yeah. 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 But whatever. It's fine. Florence Pugh did amazing to sell whatever the scene that she's in. Yeah. She could, she could play th- a, a, a farting rock and it'll be great. <laughs> I think honestly, uh, her accent also improved from Black Widow, which yeah. I was like, I was kind of like, uh, again, knee jerk reaction when she had the, the, the Russian accent thing that's from like, you know, yeah. and I was like, ah, oh, man, I, I think it's always kind of it feels extra forced and silly when Americans try to do that. Yeah. Cause like it's never really that great. Uh, yeah. So, but I think it somehow got better in this one. Like I think or maybe she's you just got improved. more used to it. Do you think? Yeah. I think, I think maybe I got more used to it. Maybe she just had more practice and time yeah. to like, Are they I, both? maybe she, yeah, she watched black widow and was like, Hmm, maybe I got to like tweak that. I think her Russian but. accent was better than uh, the Sokovian accent by, uh, Le- oh, <laughs> by yeah. Elizabeth Olsen for which, Charlotte Witch. Thank God they dropped that too. Yeah. Like uh, they bring it up every once in a while when she's yeah. angry or something. It's whatever. Uh, that's whatever. something it's, we'll talk about. Yeah. Um, now let's get into my gosh the K Bishop versus Kingpin. Yeah. What the fuck? Okay. Like, <sighs> what the fuck? And, and 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 let's get into Echo versus Kingpin. Um Oh gosh, what the fuck was that? If it would have been more believable if they were like teaming up on Kingpin, you know? Yeah. Or it something. Was, it was gosh, you got what the fuck? <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> he was like like you know, like he was with the cane and with the he, he looked like evil Willy Wonka. <laughs> and then trying to fight Kate Bishop, he ripped that door off. I mean, not not only the fact is um and when we get into we'd be doing the same Wilson Fist, you got a major strength boost and durability boost. Yeah. Yeah, which makes sense because in MCU, I think that Wilson Fist would have died instantly. Yeah. Um, but then again, his appeal is more for his intelligence and his actual physical strength. Yeah, although um, they do sometimes crank that physical strength up, especially in like the comic situations when it's kind of you know when it's uh convenient. Yeah, when it's gonna be like <laughs> like there's one. I remember one time he like slammed Spider Man. Who's those? Yeah, like he's like crushed Spider Man to like to an extent. Like just grabs him and just like whatever. And it's like okay, like again, yeah. he, he sh- like uh, in the comics he's like he's massive. Yeah, <laughs> like literally like uh like twice the size and like weight and everything and the, the the excuse that they use is that he's pure muscle pretty much he's not fat even though he looks fat he's just yeah, like he's, he's kind of like a like you know those like uh, those like strong men bodybuilder dudes yeah, he's a genetic who, freak yeah who look really chunky but it's just because they have so much fucking mass on them that they're just like you know they're just pure muscle which is fine i can believe it you know to an extent i'm willing to suspend that disbelief but you, you gotta like I, mean, I don't know. You, you got to prove it to me, you yeah, know, and this at one least in one. live action. And I don't know if they really did that. Yeah. I mean, like he survived all those explosions and stuff like that, which is honestly is whatever. And the f- honestly, the fact that even Kate Bishop was able to take down Kingpin <laughs> really quick. Like, I don't know if you guys hear the rain that's just really turned up in here, but like it's it's really pouring it's down. My, it's my feelings of what happened. They did <laughs> yeah. what they did to Wilson Fisk. <laughs> the, the, the nature has answered to my call. Yeah. So honestly, <laughs> Okay, so what are your okay? Before I go into my rant, what are, you, what are your feelings on Wilson Fisk Kingpin? Do you okay? First, let me tell you the interview they had. They they asked him like if it's the same. They straight up asked him like, is it the same Wilson Fisk? Yeah. And he said this like, look, I try to t- uh, tie as much emotional dots from the Daredevil TV series and Netflix series to this, but obviously you could tell that he has a major strength and durability boost that he didn't have in that yeah. series. And he said, and I'll just leave it at that, and that's all I say. Okay, I I say that like it should be, and I hope it is the same. Wilson Fisk that we see in Daredevil carried over here because I think that would be a huge disservice to the, just the actor and writers and the characters, everything that they built in that show uh, and what made him like really compelling Yeah. Uh, to then just kind of write that all away would just be like like so disappointing but um, based on what you saw from what i saw like i guess so like it it's like really. maybe i don't know but here's the thing is like kingpin like he's basically street level thanos right and like, exactly he, and he, that's he, why and he was okay here he was fine but he shouldn't he shouldn't be okay or fine he it's like terrifying as fuck exactly it's like if imagine if we watched infinity war or endgame and thanos was like fine it's yeah, like that would be so disappointing what if, what if thanos, <laughs> thanos got uh knocked out by the winter soldier bucky yeah that's yeah, what it, it felt like yeah it's like uh I think the biggest issue was that they just rushed to introduce him. Like I would have been fine with them just kind of teasing him, him being in the background. He's the guy who's pulling the strings like, Oh, this guy, like he's there. Yeah, he's like shadowy or something. Yeah, exactly. Like, Oh, Kingpin's here. Even like show him at the end, but like, don't just have like 
he shouldn't have been the climactic fight. Like they're building up Echo as like the main villain through this. And it's like, that's more interesting. And even him and Yelena being more interesting as the yeah. villains for this, you and know, Maya should be also the one fighting. Uh, I mean, they had a fight. I, I actually don't think they should have had a fight in so five. No. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they should, it's the resolution of that Ronin arc. Like yeah, he absolutely. has to come to terms with his sins. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like that would have been, stronger writing a little bit more like you know right. like that they would have gotten more of an arc from pretty much been. all the characters but like they 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 shoehorn in kingpin and yes. it's like okay now kingpin's here and it's kind of like meh like all right that was fine but again it's like even josh whedon knew for like thanos like you can't have him be the first avengers villain yeah, he's so got to show up later. later and it's like with street level villains you build up to kingpin you know you don't just and put it, him right there in the first yeah, one even even daredevil like they he's the I mean, they build him up throughout the whole fucking show. Yeah, he doesn't show up on the first episode. It's no, like, he shows up and you build him up and everything. And eventually you get that big climatic fight between him and Daredevil uh, like a few times. Yeah, <laughs> and then he but, appears in every season afterwards. Yeah, because he's like this huge overarching villain, especially for Daredevil and also Spider-Man, which I hope they do eventually introduce. Yeah. And now they could because in yeah, exactly. this movie is how he's like, he's basically, he's been torn down to street level, which is great. And so I want to see him in like, uh, like basically... Again, he is street level Thanos. Yeah. Everyone has a reason to fucking hate Kingpin as just as like, you know, the Avengers have every reason to hate Thanos. Like all of the Avengers kind of have their own reason. It's like everyone has their own fucking reason. Spider-Man, Daredevil, Hawkeye, they uh, whatever. Like they all have a fucking reason to be like, fuck this guy. Like I want to exactly. take him down. And so they should they should have. Yes. <laughs> but I don't know. It's like, I yeah, it's di underwhelming and disappointing is basically how I'll put him here. He was fine but he shouldn't be that he should be more i think i think ultimately what i realized um after that interview and stuff i don't think this is i don't I don't think the matt murdoch we see in spider-man no way home and i don't yeah. think the phil wilson fist that we see in here are the same ones we see in the netflix series lame because i think but i think what's hap what's what they're probably going to do is that they take the best part of what they like from the series which, yeah and and like you know the character development the backstory and stuff like that yeah but they take out stuff they don't like like probably iron fist yeah okay. or, or like, that's true i forgot about yeah <laughs> i've oh god dude it's like i blinked that shit out of my yeah. mind but it's like yeah that's that's probably for the best <laughs> yeah and then uh what's it called because i there was an interview and it, this is going to tie into our uh, matrix episode that's that uh, is going to come out on uh monday um is that you know uh the one who plays Bugs, Colleen, um, no, not Colleen Wing, uh, Jessica Henwick, who plays Bugs on uh, Matrix Resurrections. Yeah. She also played Colleen Wing on uh, Iron Fist as like, you know, the one who really should oh, have been Iron shit. Fist. Oh shit, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah. Whoa, what a, again, so, I blocked that shit out of my mind. So she, so she actually says, um, she actually said that, hey, she got an offer to play Shang-Chi, probably audition as Shang-Chi's sister or, mm -hmm. um, or a role in, or one of the main character in uh, Matrix Resurrections. I bet both companies says that you can't audition for both though. Oh, that's yeah, which so is kind stupid. of sad because like there's no guarantee for either role, right? Yeah, that's lame, man. But they said that for the especially for Shang Chi, they're like, but hey, if you play um, if you play this character um, on uh, the sister and Shang Chi, there's yeah. absolutely zero chance of Colleen Wing ever coming back, ever. Period. And I'm kind of like, and to be fair, she's like the only character I really liked from that show. So apparently, that's the reason why. That's one of the reasons why she said no to uh, Shang Chi. Oh. And that's why she shows Matrix. She apparently really loves uh, the show. And she, I mean, she missed the faults, but it's like it's a show that brought her on the map. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and which makes me think, what's well, called? Which which makes me think that, uh, yeah, they're only gonna pick and choose the best stuff from Netflix. Yeah. I think that's fine. Yeah. Because I don't mind if they cut out, you know, the Defenders and like Iron Fist and like even parts of Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. Yeah. Like, again, there's there's reason there, there's I mean, a lot of good shit that they could pull from it. So I think that's fine if they just want to be like that happened in an alternate reality. But most of that happened pretty much exactly. here. Like, I'm fine with that. Uh, with I mean, the exception of Mouth. most of Daredevil. Right. Like, yeah. like Punisher and everything else. Like, there's a lot to love there. But because I like, Cottonmouth Mouth is like now gonna be blade yeah, yeah. Holly. so that that it's a little confusing you know what just because to keep it to keep it in and keep it pg friendly though this is never pg friendly i'll, I'll just like keep my rant very short okay basically in kingpin and daredevil he had the entire city in the palm of his hands nearly yeah. beats daredevil in submission who's one of the best fighters like yeah uh, in the in, in marvel comics and you know i guess in yeah. the tv series um traumatic childhood backstory uh has a flesh out relationship with vanessa who becomes his wife and, he always, and he's the Thanos of New York City, as you said, right? Yeah. But then in Hawkeye, he has the entire tracksuit mafia. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like these 
quote unquote killers that go to Imagine Dragons for concerts. <laughs> um, he he looks like evil Willy Wonka. He takes out he's taken out by Hawkeye Junior. Uh, Kate Bishop. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll give her the respect. She's another Hawkeye. Um, <laughs> Hawkeye she, too. Yeah, and let's not even talk about it. the the fucking cheap fake out death by uh, her niece. Oh Mia, yeah, the end. After it's like they have one scene together. There's stupid. no dramatic impact. No, There's yeah. no resolved at all. We know it, no we know, real build up, and we know he's not dead. If they do the shit in the comics where like he's blind in both eyes, which yeah. is lame. Yeah, by don't the way. do that. Um, honestly, I, I honestly they did him fucking dirty in the show. I think they did him really fucking dirty. Um, the fact like it's. Okay, I'm. You know what? I'm about to have an aneurysm if we talk about it. So let's wrap this up and let's right. talk about uh, Echo thoughts on Echo season, like like a series based on this. Are you excited for Echo season a series uh, based on what you saw? Saw? Are you gonna? Do you feel like it might be better than Hawkeye, especially if they go with the uh, Echo and Daredevil versus uh, Kingpin? And I is will that, say, is that what you think they'll go? No, I don't know. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> I'm not excited for an echo mini series honestly i think she was a cool character i think she's fine but they didn't really sell me on wanting to watch a whole show just with her if they do team her up with daredevil which it sounds like something that they would do and i think would be the smart decision just business wise like yeah people want to see daredevil they don't really give a fuck about echo at least not initially uh so i think that's fine that's a little more intriguing them going up against kingpin like that's Again, it's fine. I'm not really looking forward to it. We'll see what happens. We'll see who's the show running, who's directing and writing it and shit. I'll I'll wait to see what that happens. Uh, but yeah, that that's that's okay. Do you want to give my overall opinion on the show or no? Okay, well, I, mean, I kind gonna, of already did. But. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess, no, I guess, we'll just do ratings and stuff. Yeah, but okay. I guess for me, for Echo, um, not gonna lie, I'm more excited for uh, I'm more excited for Echo, uh, Echo's Echo series than I was for Hawkeye series. Mainly because I did like her backstory the best. And also, like, in the comics, she has a cool design with, like... I don't know why they... They kind of hinted at it, because, like, she has, like, a, like, you know, native... Like, a face paint over her, her head. Yeah. And then... Um, and also, I want to see more of her abilities actually fleshed out. Yeah. And if you guys hear that, it's just the rain going <laughs> yeah. overkill. Uh, <laughs> because they're disagreeing with my take Rain is on. pounding, man. And I honestly... I'm excited to see uh, Kingpin actually being Kingpin. Yeah. And also... Um, daredevil and echo i think they'll have an interesting dynamic because you know it could be really cool to see yeah yeah so that's that's why what if daredevil's not in it i'm not excited at all not gonna lie yeah Yeah. that really deflates a lot of the the issue all right no offense to tom brady well uh so (laughs) (laughs) oh Oh, fuck um uh, fuck tom brady i'm just kidding i I, I love you guys now fuck tom brady it's fine yeah okay so, (laughs) so um yeah Okay, just real quick, what's the rating for the show? Uh, I'd give it like a streaming with ads. Uh, it was enjoyable. Like, it's something that I wouldn't mind putting on in the background, like on Christmas, funny enough. Like, if yeah. I'm there with my family and we just want something that's like enjoyable that anyone can kind of just pop in on, like Christmas wise, it's fine. It's fun. Uh, but yeah, streaming with ads. When I first watched it, I put it in the bargain bin because I was it's such a knee jerk reaction to what they <laughs> put into Kingpin, and also I thought like all the stuff with Eleanor and whatever, like it's a, a lot of writing flaws. Yeah, it yeah, it does. And, yeah. and also, I the first two episodes were shot, I think, pretty poorly and was pretty boring. But overall, just thinking about it, how much fun I had the series, I put it up to barely streaming with ads. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. That's that's it. Thank you for our show. Um. We hope to see you guys next time. Uh, wait for our future reviews like The Matrix, uh, Tragedy and Macbeth, uh, Nightmare Alley. It's going to be a crazy year. We're, gonna, we're pumping it out. We're killing ourselves watching these There movies. is a lot coming out soon. So, yeah, let us know oh, uh, and, uh, what you guys think of Hawkeye. Yes. What, what do you guys think of the overall, like, all the uh, Disney Plus, like, uh, uh mcu shows because there was they all came out this year which is it's hard to fathom that but it's like they all fucking came out i know next year is like which is your favorite next year is like she Mine's loki moon yeah same <laughs> honestly uh i think it's like loki okay you know what real quick uh rankings for me it's a uh, loki number one's loki wandavision i would put um and what if include what if included maybe number three i would put uh hawkeye actually uh falcon the winter soldier and the last is like what if See, I've only, I didn't see Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, so I said by default that's number five. <laughs> yeah, by default it's number five. But I'd definitely put Loki at number one. Uh, and then probably WandaVision. And then... Uh, Hawkeye. Yeah, and then Hawkeye. Then What If. And then probably 
yeah, Winter Soldier because I haven't seen it, so one I day. can't really we'll say. <laughs> yeah, one day I'll, I'll check it out. But yeah, yeah. well, what, what's your rankings? Let us know. Yes, honestly, uh, thank you guys so much. Yeah, next year is crazy. It's gonna be She Hulk, uh, Miss Marvel, Moon Knight. I'm looking forward to She Hulk and Moon Knight. Moon Knight, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, let us know. Let us know. And if, as always, if you like our content, like and follow us on our Instagram and our YouTube page. Yeah, thanks Half for listening, clue. guys. Very cool. So we just press uh we just press stop, right? Yeah.